Hey everybody, Professor Snart checking in as we get uh, into our uh, very last week of our five-week course here. So our focus is um, pretty much entirely on that final essay that we have going. So let's take a quick look at our due dates to see what we've got going on. Uh, we're right down here at the bottom. We're into um, uh, Unit 10 here, which has you posting to a discussion board, which is really an extension of the Unit 9 discussion board. You're talking about your topic, but also hopefully talking about some of the sources that you found, and that's due Monday, June 22nd. Um, and again, none of that is like contractual. You're not necessarily locked into it. But one of the things, just plagiarism-wise, plagiarism -wise, that I look for is if your topic goes from something here, and then it's kind of the same here, but you're still, you know, just putting it together, but then when you submit a final essay and it's completely different, that's a big red flag for me. So, um, again, you're not locked into these topics necessarily or in, in, the, in the exact way that you formulate them for these discussion boards. But if you change things drastically, um, it really kind of draws attention to itself. Um, uh, and again, the big difference for Unit 10 is in addition to just your topic, which you started to formulate up here, you're also talking about some of your sources, hopefully all of your sources. But again, you know, we're piecing things together as we go. The other part of what we do for Unit 10 then is a student conference meeting. So I'm just going to click into that and uh, in that, into that unit and show you what that looks like. So I'm recording this on Monday. The Unit 10 discussion board is due on Monday. The... Um, conference uh, days that we have to meet cover Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at a variety of different times. I've mentioned before that uh, if you go to sign up and there's just nothing available, then we can probably work something out. But if I don't hear from you until Wednesday, I almost start to wonder if you haven't just waited so long that you didn't even realize this was happening. And we probably could have met, but now it's so late. So. Um, if I haven't heard from you by basically today, which is Monday, um, then, you know, I'm less sort of willing to, to switch up schedules and do all kinds of stuff. I've heard from a number of you. I think we've worked things out, um, you know, in ways that uh, hopefully are mutually beneficial. I know the summer can be a, not just a busy time, but sort of a weird scheduling time. You know, you don't have a regularly recurring week like you would maybe in a, <clears throat> a longer fall or spring term. But anyway... If nothing works in the in the sign up, then just be in touch with me and we can figure something out. And of course, don't forget the discussion board, repeating a little bit from your topic, maybe developing it if it was kind of rough in the first go around, and then of course, um, identifying some of the sources that you'll be using. So let's go backwards just to make sure that we're on the same page here in terms of the final essay assignment itself. We read and hopefully you watched if you wanted to, um, The Death of a Salesman. Keep in mind, you don't have to write about this for your final essay, but I think it's a really good choice. You won't repeat from the first essay. There's lots of different themes and interesting characters going on, so there's lots to talk about. Um, it connects with lots of different kinds of uh, classic literature, contemporary stuff, things that aren't like print literature at all, so it, it lends itself to a comparison essay. And of course, there's lots and lots of research uh, that's easily available on the databases. So. Um, it sounds like kind of a, a flimsy reason to make the choice for doing this, but uh, you know, if, if you make your research life a little bit easier in your primary text choice, that seems to make sense, especially again given our pretty compressed time frame here. Okay, five to six pages, not including the work cited. You'd be surprised if that sounds like a lot. Um, you'd be surprised when doing a comparison to develop a discussion that talks about both. Um, you know, multiple points of connection for both of your primary texts. You're uh, uh, including three secondary sources throughout um, the, the paper. So probably not every single paragraph will have every source in it, right? But pretty much every body paragraph will have at least one quote from a secondary source. Um, you know, that the building paragraphs like that, you'll find that um, those five to six pages, they really, you know, you can... They, they fill up pretty quickly, and not just with fluff or extra stuff, but with actual discussion of ways in which the two primary texts you've chosen are connected. So again, everybody does a comparison essay. One of the works is from, at best, or at minimum, our textbook and hopefully our syllabus. Um, and then the other, the other primary text is kind of your choice. It could be from our book, could be something we've read. 
It could be um, a book that you're familiar with, something you read for a different class. It could be a movie, it could be a piece of music. That's the, the creative part of making a connection between like a so-called literary work and something that's kind of outside the bounds of our class. Um, uh, there's a slideshow here that uh, will talk about doing a comparison essay. Again, um, primarily what I'm looking for is the way that you set up these body paragraphs. So as the slideshow will talk about, what you don't want is <clears throat> this uh, a thing where you do sort of like everything about one primary text everything about the other primary text and then you're kind of stuck like what do you do for this third one you can't just do comparison here because it's supposed to be all comparison and if you do you end up repeating so that block con construction just doesn't work very well what we're looking for is point by point so you have your two texts right there's characters that are similar or a theme that's similar or a character relationship or whatever the thing generally speaking that you, you think unites these two works and then you break that down into specifics about that general connection. Um, so, you know, this is a, a sub point of this larger point about character, as is this one, as is this one. So this is much more effective. It keeps the idea of comparison right in front of the reader's face the whole time. You could go on with body paragraphs, honestly, as long as you could keep thinking of ways in which these two ideas or texts, or, you know, in this case, characters are connected. So point by point, if I'm seeing a block comparison in your comparison essay, again, just an easy indicator to me that you really haven't done the work for the course, which is as simple in this case as looking through this like four slide PowerPoint. And it's narrated too, so when you're clicking on these little speaker icons, I kind of walk you through or the, the audio walks you through what the slide is trying to show. The audio quality is really bad because it tries to keep the file size low, but you can still, I think, hear what's going on. Um, okay, so hopefully the assignment's clear. You can obviously be in touch with me. If not, the basic organizational approach we've got is clear. Again, if you're confused about that, you can be in touch with me. Um, and then we move into Unit 9, where you've hopefully got an idea, maybe even started a rough outline, certainly um, done some of the source stuff. And now we have the chance to meet in a, a quick conference. It's only 10 minutes, so it's not like an exhaustive thing. It's just your chance to maybe run your topic by me. Let me know if you're having tr trouble with the uh, sources or with other ideas for comparison, right? It's just a quick check-in before you are really sitting down to fully write the essay and then, of course, um, turning it in. Which brings us to our next due date, basically our last due date. Unit 11, at the end of this week, Friday, June 26th, right towards the end of the five-week term, you are turning your essay in. Now, truthfully, you could turn it in earlier if you feel like you really get a good start on it. Uh, you've double-checked the Works Cited page. You've done all the stuff in Unit 11 here. Um, some common problems to look for. And then you're really just submitting your essay. You'll see just off the edge of the screen here, there's a final course evaluation. That's just a, a last opportunity for you to give me some feedback about the course itself. Hopefully positive, but maybe there were th some things you found challenging. Um, it's anonymous, it's ungraded, it'll take you like five or 10 minutes at most. So clearly your focus is on submitting that final essay. Um, what else, what else? I've already mentioned that uh, essays that you submit in this class are automatically run through um, a tool that's built into Blackboard called SafeAssign. It's like a plagiarism detection kind of a tool. And so I think I've also posted an image of what that looks like for me on my end when I look at the report that it generates. If there are, you know, phrases that you've borrowed from other places on the web, that's plagiarism. If you haven't cited them, um, it, they're, they're really easy to catch. Uh, so I just, I, I do my best to warn people away from plagiarism. I think some people get right down to the, the due date and they just get panicked and there's a lot of points writing and they just make one bad choice. They're not bad people, they just make one bad choice. But it's pretty black or white. If you just lift stuff from the web and it shows up in your essay, whether it's quote unquote intentional or not, there's just sort of no excuse for it. Like, oh, I didn't know. Well, you should know, because it's 11.02. Uh, oh, I was gonna delete it. Well, you didn't delete it. 
oh, I don't know how that got there. Come on, really? Um, so again, for as easy as stuff is to find on the web for you or the potential student who chooses to plagiarize, it's that easy for, for me and the, the safe assigned system to find as well. So really, really be careful with that. Just focus on our primary texts and the secondary research that we're doing. We've talked a lot about um, citations, so we have uh, correct ways of citing things, which is the difference between plagiarism and not, right? Um, we have examples for how to build your work cited page, um, right? All the examples are here that you need, so it's just a matter of finding them. One last reminder that our sources are the primary texts that we're using, and then for most people probably database material that has to be relevant. In other words, it's a direct discussion of the primary text, not just some related idea. And it's appropriate, which means it's not just something you Googled or it's from the web or no matter if it's a credible web source or not, what we're looking for is your ability to use the databases as a trustworthy way of getting this kind of information. So that's what I need to evaluate. If you use web stuff, if it's plagiarized, that's, I mean, almost a, a guaranteed F. For plagiarism, it is. But if there's like serious source issues at this point, you're not going to pass 1102. It's like a fundamental core competency that you can do this right. Now, I'm not saying that if you have like a little typo, maybe once or twice, that's not what I'm talking about. If there's, but if there's serious like source usage issues, then that's clearly a different kind of category of problem. Okay, so back to our due dates, just so we're all on board here. We finished up unit nine. We're coming into our last week here. You have the discussion board due right away on the Monday. You are signing up for a conference or contacting me um, sooner, right? If you're waiting till Wednesday to say there's no times available, it makes me wonder if you've even looked. So that's not ideal. And then we're turning around to write the essay. Obviously, you can be in touch with me throughout this, these intervening days here with uh, email questions about things. Um, if you happen to see me online on Skype, we can, you know, connect really quickly and do a little chat or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, like I said before, if you're feeling comfortable and confident and just want to be done with the essay, you don't need to wait until that Friday. Um, you know, we're already on a pretty compressed time frame, but if you really get a good idea and put the essay together, we've had our conference, everything seems good, and you're ready to submit, you don't have to wait. Um, <clears throat> but Friday is the latest. There's no... No late work is accepted after the what is basically the end of our course. Alrighty, so uh, I look forward to virtually conferencing with people or connecting via email. And again, if you have any questions or concerns, be in touch. You, the one of the the I mean, there's really no secrets to good writing, but one of the keys that people often overlook has really nothing to do with the writing or the idea or the research or any of that. It's do you feel confident in what you're doing, that you're on the right track, that you're doing the right thing, that you're organizing effectively, it's the right type of essay. So the more confident you are going in, the better the writing is going to be. It's going to be succinct. It's going to be to the point. It's going to be, it, it's going to, the, the, the quotation or the details are going to connect in an obvious way to the bigger idea. So all of the things that we're looking for. So it's really important that you feel not even just comfortable, but confident in what you're doing. So if you're not confident, be in touch with me and we'll see what we can do. All right, I'll talk to everybody soon.